This will likely be a very divisive video, so please try to hear me out and watch the entire video before spamming hate or idiotic comments down below. So with the rise of money in football and the rise of crazy transfers, there has also been an increased use of the term English tax. English tax usually refers to the idea that a player's market value and transfer price is increased because of his nationality, and people usually claim that the English media are at fault for this English tax phenomenon. Today I will be discussing this idea and showing that it doesn't really exist and it's really just a term to use if you want an easy way out of thinking critically about a transfer or a player situation. I think a better way of looking at this English tax idea is by thinking about it more as an issue within the Premier League rather than looking at it as an issue with nationality. And yes of course there are homegrown player quotas that teams in the Prem need to meet which is the actual English tax which likely does affect English player prices a bit but it's not the one that I'll be talking about in this video. English players rarely tend to leave the Premier League, so the majority of English players transfer from one Prem team to another. English players in the Premier League aren't being slapped with crazy values solely because they are English. It is because they play in the Premier League. Usually, the transfers within the league are from a big club trying to buy a player from a smaller club. The smaller club will price their player higher when selling to a big club because they know they can milk more money out of them. People usually fail to think about this and just say English tax whenever an English player gets valued highly. The majority of the transfers that people claim were heavily influenced by English tax are usually quite justifiable and make sense. I'm not saying that those prices aren't crazy, but those prices aren't solely caused by the player's English nationality. I'll go through some English tax examples that are really just Premier League tax and have little to do with the players being English. Harry Maguire's £80 million deal to Manchester United from Leicester is probably the transfer that people think of first when they hear the term English tax. Obviously, in hindsight, this transfer was an absolute disaster for both Manchester United and Harry Maguire, but his price tag was not £80 million because he was English. Of course, Harry Maguire should never be worth £80 million, but this is just a case of a smaller club selling to a bigger club within the richest top league in the world. Leicester City knew that Manchester United would be dumb enough to spend big on Maguire, so they tried to get the most out of a club willing to spend a lot. Maguire was entering his prime years and had just come off of two decent seasons at Leicester, so his price would obviously be set high by Leicester. However, if Leicester tried to sell Maguire to a team like West Ham, Maguire's price would have never been set that high, because West Ham don't have the same financial resources as Manchester United. This shows that it has more to do with the club that is buying the player. So when people say that Maguire was only 80 million because he was English, it just shows that people don't apply context to any transfers involving English players. Because a few seasons later, Leicester City sold another center back, Wesley Fofana, for around 80 million to Chelsea and no one batted an eye. Is this French tax? Or does no one care because this player isn't English? Maguire has been a poor player for Man United, and I don't think he should have ever been valued that highly. But his high value had very little to do with his nationality, and it was more about Leicester trying to milk a club that is known for poor transfer deals in recent history. Another English tax example that really isn't English tax is Jack Grealish's £100 million move to Manchester City. This is another example of a smaller club selling an important player to the richest club in the league at the time. Grealish wasn't priced at 100 mil because he was English. He was priced at 100 mil because he was by far the best player at a club that was in the lower half of the league. Grealish's influence on Aston Villa's success and his value to the club makes his transfer seem not too crazy. Without Grealish, Villa would likely not be in the Premier League today. So Villa valuing Grealish at 100 mil was fine. People tend to forget that price tags are set based on how important and valuable a player is to the club that is selling. Grealish isn't worth £100 million to City, but he was worth that much to Aston Villa. Villa would have been silly to sell their best player for £30-40 million, which is what a lot of Twitter experts were valuing him at. Again, this shows that people don't consider the context of the transfer and the value of a player to their club. If Grealish was any other nationality, he still would have been priced that highly because he meant so much to his club. I don't care if you think he is worth £100 million, but there is no way you could argue against his importance to Villa, which is why this price tag was not outrageous and was definitely not caused by him being English. There are many more examples that I could go over, but it would be very repetitive. 
I think the main point is that the price tags of English players have less to do with nationality and more to do with the fact that they play in the Premier League. For example, players like Richarlison and Anthony would never be 60 to 90 million pounds if they were being bought by a team outside of the Premier League. But if these guys were English, everyone would say it's because of English tax, even though it's clearly a problem with the Premier League and the money that's in the league. People look at price tags and automatically try to compare players with other players in another league that went for the same amount of money, which is silly because every league has a different financial status. Yes, there might be a mediocre English player who gets bought for more than an elite Italian Serie A player, which is why context is important and the club for which they play for is important and the league that they play in is very important as well. It's also very strange to me that English players are the only players targeted when most of the big transfers in the world do not involve English players. There are players of all nationalities that get big moves and there is little mention of things like Brazilian tax or Spanish tax, even though the English players' prices sometimes are more justifiable and make more sense than a lot of those transfers. So yes, I don't believe English tax exists, which places me in the minority of this conversation. I just think it doesn't make much sense and is a way for people to either hate on English players or is just a term to use because people don't understand how the transfer market works. If you believe that it exists, that's fine, but there is very little proof to show that it exists. And it isn't really due to a player being English. A player's nationality has a lot less to do with the transfer than most people want to believe. So drop your thoughts in the comments below and I'll try to respond to everybody. If you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching and thanks for the recent support on my channel.